to uh, that uh, we have some historical basis on how that this policy does not work. In 2005, uh, the tax uh, cuts that were granted uh, uh, ended up uh, putting Ohio in a disadvantaged position uh, when the Great Recession occurred. We would have been much better off if those tax cuts had not occurred. Uh, those tax cuts, there's no evidence that benefit the economy. But what it did do was make us disinvest in, in education, disinvest in, in working families, disinvest in, in uh, 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 job creation altogether in the state. And, and there's good historical basis for that. Um, could you talk very quickly about the fact that this meeting today, uh, you're probably going to hear new revenue numbers. And in the past, uh, people have been waiting for more numbers to come in so that they could uh, spend more money. But given the fact that this budget banks hundreds of millions of dollars, does getting additional revenue at this point make a difference in, in the policy? Well, I think we're as interested as you are to see um, what the new revenue projections are going to be. And I think our take on that is that, you know, again, I, I do want to clarify something. So as Democrats, um, and I'm going to go back to the tax policy because I, that's where they have been um, putting a lot of, of, of the resources. Um, you know, the, the tax policy, if it were to be strategic, if, if this were to be an income tax cut, for some of the tax brackets and not so much the top two uh, that really don't need uh, the income tax cut, that's a whole different ballgame. If we're really going to invest, um, let's really invest in what matters and, and where it matters. Because the folks in the lower brackets, as you all know, turn that money around quickly. And so then you see an economic bang for the buck when you do that kind of tax credit. And beyond that, the business owners also benefit because people are spending money you know, buying their commodities. And so, you know, if we're going to do that kind of thing, let's be strategic about it. Small business tax cut is similar in a way that if that were to be strategic uh, and you were to incentivize uh, a business owner creating a job or buying a piece of equipment, that's a whole different ballgame. But that's not what we're talking about. You know, these are very broad. They are not strategic. And I think primarily that's our issue with it. Um, if we see that there is increased revenue uh, in what we hear today, uh, I think our take on that would be let's, let's look at that in a strategic way and create some investments uh, where this budget lacks. Uh, you know, the Senate version of the budget cut $62 billion or million dollars um, out of the education budget. Let's restore some of that money. Education is something that we should be investing in, and it's important not only to the students and the families in Ohio, but to the businesses in Ohio. And as some of that goes K to 12, some of that's workforce development, uh, some of that's tech uh, education, you know, th that's something that we believe is a very good investment in where the dollar should go. So uh, I think that holes may have been created uh, by the Senate version of this budget, not that I was a big fan, by the way, of the House version of the budget, uh, but the Senate, uh, no offense to my colleague, made it worse. And so uh, I, I say that, that we continue to invest in education, Early childhood, I think, it is a place where well, we have made some investments, but they're woefully inadequate for the return on investment there. And, and we know this stuff. I mean, we're hearing from business people that this is where they want us to invest. And so I think those are a couple of areas where we should um, you, you know, at least take a look uh, if we've got increased projections at, at making some of the strategic investments in those areas that have been cut uh, in the Senate version of the budget. Uh, what are your main goals going into conference committee, and what's the tactics you're going to use to achieve those goals? Well, again, our goal is uh, to make sure that uh, we invest what matters in, in the state. Uh, we outlined many of those things both in, in the House uh, uh, as well as the Senate uh, amendments uh, that we brought forward in committee as well as on the floor of the House and the Senate. Um, those things uh, we're going to continue to, to advocate uh, for. So. Uh, those investments, uh, again, is education, our local communities. Let's make sure that we uh, provide the dollars for child welfare, uh, uh, senior services. Uh, but there's a whole slew of, of positive investments. Uh, it's just that, again, not uh, uh, in, in when our economy is doing a little bit better, we need, need to have all Ohioans share in that, not uh, just the wealthiest Ohio. Again. Um, what do you think of this, the, the argument that's coming from the governor's office and to a certain extent from the Senate 
that eventually we have to get uh, schools on this formula and let the chips fall where they may. And if it means less money for a school district that's losing enrollment, so be it. It's not just about losing money for enrollment. Uh, it's, uh, they're taking that money from the public schools and sticking it for, to for-profit uh, private schools that do not have the regulations. And that's been a democratic priority uh, to make sure that all students get quality education. We're just not uh, uh, robbing the public schools uh, to put it to a poor performing uh, uh, charter school. Uh, so there's a siphoning uh, away of those, those dollars. Uh, the, the urban centers that have lost uh, uh, population, um, we need to build those, those urban centers uh, back up uh, and, and make them strong because when we do that, we make the entire state strong. Uh, we need uh, those urban centers because of the amount of poverty that exists there. Uh, we need to make sure that the investment is in there to try to address the needs uh, that uh, those students have uh, and uh, what they're bringing into the classroom every day is a lot different uh, than in some other areas of the state. And that also uh, impacts uh, the rural areas. But let me just say too, you know, this idea that we're pitting the urbans against the rurals, against the suburbans, you know, if we would adequately fund education, we wouldn't be having this conversation. If we would stop giving tax breaks to primarily the wealthy in the state and invest in education, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And so I think our view is, um, let's put adequate dollars into the formula, stop pitting one school district against the next, uh, and take this seriously, make the investment. But I think the state of Ohio, and the folks in the state of, state of Ohio want us to make. Beyond that, I do want to highlight that the, the idea that charter schools are siphoning money off of the foundation formula is absolutely real. And what's lacking in the budget, while the dollars are there for the charter schools, the reforms are not. The reforms are running separately in a separate piece of legislation. Um, you know, our view is that if the funding is going to be in the budget, the reform should be in the budget. Because we've got situations all over Ohio that you people report on every single day in every single part of this state where you've got a charter school that's doing something that they're not supposed to do. And our charter reform, you know, is not part of the budget where the money is. I mean, that's nonsensical. And so our view is that if the money is going to be there, the reform should be there, and it should be robust. Uh, because a, a version of that legislation that passed out of the House was lacking. Uh, and so we need to take this seriously and uh, make sure that those charter schools, um, and there are some good ones in the state of Ohio, but if you're not and you're failing the kids of Ohio, that you should be called out for that. And that was uh, one of the emphasis uh, yesterday on the floor in, in the Senate, as you know, Senator Tom Sawyer brought forward a package of charter reform, uh, and we felt that that was essential uh, uh, with a budget that actually is getting more dollars uh, to charter schools. So this, this year, we broke a billion dollars going to charter schools, uh, the largest amount in, in the state history. But yet, we are not ensuring that the kids in those schools are getting a quality education. We're not ensuring the protection of the taxpayer dollars that are going into those charter schools. We need those types of reforms. Uh, we are not going to support uh, a budget that has uh, significant increases uh, for charter schools when uh, it is lacking uh, the reform and accountability. 